Hi, happy Wednesday. Let's see. Uh, it is Wednesday, January 31st. Happy birthday to my wonderful wife, Lynn. Um, it's her birthday today. She's working. We seem to both have a habit of working on our birthdays, but we'll celebrate on Friday. So, um, Again, Wednesday, January 31st, 2024, I'm Nicole with Equally Creative by Nicole, and I am very excited to share some items with you today. Um, we are going to make four cards, and we are using a celebration item. However, I paired it with um, an annual catalog item that you may already have. So let's take a look at what we're going to use tonight, and I'm going to show you some samples while people hop on, don't forget to say hello. I'm gonna switch my screen around here. Okay, so this is the celebration stamp set that you can get obviously for free with a purchase. This is just sentiment. So um, I decided to pair it with a really amazing paper and bundle from the annual catalog, which is our cheerful daisies stamp set and die cuts. So we're gonna use not a whole lot of these, but um, we will use the DSP a lot because I used it in, I think, every single one of the cards. So let me share with you the main piece of DSP that I wanted to get some more use out of, and that is this piece right here. So the Delightful Daisies, comes with all of these different um, single 12 by 12 pages that of course are double-sided as all almost every one of our DSPs are. So you can see we have two fun sides to every piece. Okay. See that blue on the background. So this is the piece that I really wanted to feature tonight. So we're gonna use a good amount of that in our cards. It's a really fun design actually for this DSP because each of these um, rectangles, for lack of, they're not all squares, there's one square on here, but each rectangle is unique and they all have this fun uh, Moody Mauve background here. Just looks like somebody painted on a canvas. Hi, Melissa. I'm glad you're not napping and you're joining me tonight. Um, I'm, I had so much fun with this stamp set and I see a lot of use for it in the future. Um, it really could have gone any direction. So we have Love You More, Obviously, it's Valentine's month coming up, so you could use that. You can use it for any any occasion where you're expressing love for somebody. Enjoy your day. Can be birthday. Can be a promotion, graduation, etc. Thinking of you this Easter. Happy Mother's Day. Hello, and Dad, you're the best. I mean six sentiments, but you can cover a lot of different events and purposes to spread your love with somebody else, right? Um, what is it? A paper card is a hug, a paper hug with a fold in the middle, something along those lines. Um, I did not come up with that quote, obviously, since I can barely remember how to say it correctly. However, I love when I get a card in the mail and it's not a bill, um, I love to send cards hoping that other people feel the same way, right? So this special piece of paper has one line for each cut that you make. You will be able to cut through an entire section of the paper. So you don't have to do this weird fussy cutting in and out kind of thing. So for example, I would cut directly across this one. And once that one is cut, I would then have this piece that I can cut and then this piece, this piece, this piece. So it really was well thought out the way they laid this out so that you could make nice, easy cuts without being too crazy. So let's go ahead and get started because I've already cut up a couple of those. And our very first 
card. I'm not going to get started just yet. I want to show you a couple of extra ones because I'll forget at the end. So I did some swaps with other people and I pulled out all of these uh, heartfelt hello cards. So this is that beautiful uh, softly stippled designer series paper that is also one of the celebration items with the stamp set here layered um, on some basic cardstock. This was Michelle Fuchling. Not sure if I got her name right. Um, so that was hers. Again, that softly stippled paper. So beautiful, right? With our um, heartfelt hellos. And we do have the heartfelt hexagon that we're going to use in three of four of our cards tonight. This um, is in the annual catalog. So it is available right now. Um, this is just a sweet, simple card. I love this. It's just so wonderful. And this is by Jenny Redder. I might have to like copy that one. It looks like um, it is what they call a Dutch fold. And that is where you snip off part of this. So it's like a Dutch door. So that's what that is. I love making these. Let me put this right here. All right, here's the Love You More being used with the cute tiger. Hi, Mary. I'm glad I got to see you twice this week. All right, this was from Kate Fopma. Fopma. And she used the Jungle Friends. I think that's the name of it. Here's another one with the Jungle Friends. That's the cutest little sloth, right? And these are um, whew, the postage, postage set here that they use the die cuts from. And then one more using the fun, um, ah, I lost my brains. Let me pull the paper out so I can tell you the name of it. This is that most adored specialty designer series paper. So some sides are that, um, that fun gilded gold look. Well, look at this. I have these sitting right here. So let me show you what that looks like. Here we go. So that is the last one using that love you more. And while I have this paper out, one of our craftastics, I think this was Sue sent this one out using that same um, type of look. I believe she may have used a brayer on this piece right here. We're gonna use a brayer tonight for one of our backgrounds as well. So that's a little fun crossover there with the paper. So those are all the little swaps that I have for that. I'm gonna move those aside so they're not in my way. Excellent. Now we can get started with card number one. So card number one is going to use our um, early espresso cardstock. I did use four or five different inks tonight, but you could definitely scale this down. Just use a black ink, whatever works for you in your, um, in your creative studio. Okay, so I have all these different pieces. Because I am using such a dark cardstock, I do want to make sure I add some uh, white on the middle so I have somewhere to write and it be visible. I did keep my promise on most of my cards. We're not keeping them naked on the inside, so I'm going to add a little um, extra scrap of paper on the inside. So I'm also not wasting anything here which is nice when you have so much paper at the end of a season, you wanna be able to put it to good use. All right, so here is the inside of this card. I like to go ahead and sometimes just get this one in there and set it aside so it's kind of out of the way so I can have room to work on everything else. 
And I'm just centering this on the inside. This is a standard card base, eight and a half by five and a half. It is scored at four and a quarter. Um, my fabulous standard layer, because I like to have some of my cards that are so easy. Anybody can do it, right? Grab your kiddo, grab your niece, grab your nephew, grandkid. Everybody can participate and do these, especially these really super simple ones. So that's what my first card is. It's called a keeping it super simple card. This is the same kind of card you might find at any of my um, KISS classes. KISS just simply means keeping it super simple. And that is so everybody can participate. So we're going to do a special little technique with our, um, with our cuts today from the Heartfelt Hexagon. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out and then I'm going to stamp a daisy that is like a partial daisy and it's going to be on the edge of this. Twist this just a tiny bit. Make sure I got the whole thing. So we're going to use this half daisy, and we're going to give it a little, a little, uh, a little love right here. And it's as if it is hanging onto our magic label, our little hexy. That aside and then we're going to go ahead and stamp our sentiment below that and we're going to do enjoy your day keep that lemon lolly out because we're going to use it again so this is our enjoy your day and I am simply putting this below here and tap that down. So there is our sentiment. And now we're gonna do a little fun trick slash element to the backdrop here. So we're gonna cut this in half, right down this middle, and then separate it on the back of the sentiment that is on basic white. So what I did was I took a little bit of glue and added it to the tippy top and the very bottom. And then added this. And this, just lining up these outer edges move that into place there and then when I flip this over you can see that I've just got a little bit of that early espresso peaking on the top and the bottom this I will put up on dimensionals which I have buried And I centered this right in the middle here. So the designer series paper is doing most of the heavy lifting for this card. And I do have these fabulous iridescent foil gems. And I put a really big one right up here in the center of our daisy. And then I just added a couple of extras towards the bottom to do my trio. And that's just how super simple card number one is. All right, tell me, your mom could do this, right, Mary? This would be something pretty simple that you could have your mom do. That was basic assembly and a little tiny bit of stamping. So now we'll get a little bit more detailed. We'll 
with card number two. Card number two is going to use a fun square piece of paper from our um, from our designer series 12 by 12. So here's a scrap of one of the back sides. Okay. I've got my 12 by 12. I have a layer here that I'm going to use in a moment. And then I have a card base. Now this card base is um, four and a quarter by 11 scored at five and a half which typically I would fold and do in this portrait style, but we're going to do this and we're going to cut off one and a quarter inches from the front. So let me grab my handy dandy paper trimmer. Now, Mary, I'm going to tell you, this is not centered on here, but it doesn't move. As long as your feet are on your glass mat, this is perfect. So let me take my post-it note off because I don't want that getting chopped all up. So it doesn't matter which side I cut the one and a quarter from. That is going to turn into the front side of the card. So I'm just going to line this up on the right lines. And pull this down. And Mary, I said that this isn't moving to just point out that even if your glass mat is part of your design space, you can still use your cutter, your trimmer right on top of there. Um, so helpful, helpful to know, right? All right, so I'm gonna set this aside and I'm gonna grab this. Now I said we were gonna use the brayer. So here is the brayer. I have used brayers in the past. So, so exciting. Um, we used to have a sponge one, but this one is going to be so much fun. So let me tell you just a little bit about it. So it does have these little feet, so it's going to stand so I can ink it up and set it down. But when I go to put it on my paper, I want to make sure that those feet are sticking up towards the sky. Otherwise, I'm going to be scraping things. So I'm going to use a coordinating color that goes with this fun square and we're going to use bubble bath and I am going to simply roll this across my ink a couple times so that the whole wheel, just like if you're painting a wall is in there. I did turn those fancy feet up and then I'm simply going to put this in a, just a messy way because I don't want it to be perfect. So I'm just going to slide this in different directions and keep going. If I have some white spots, I can re-ink. And I can continue and go across here. I really love the texture that it provides. And again, I could get darker and darker. So I'll do a third pass and then we'll then we'll call it quits. So let's see, I'm gonna go once this way and once this way. So I've made it kind of dark here. And I'm setting this in my little trash can so it's out of my way. Because I'm not cleaning it right this second. So now with this, I'm going to add my punched out label with this as a background. So I just want to kind of play with this. It's really a pretty standard background design at the end here. So I'm just going to punch this out and set this aside. We're done with that piece, but you'll have a whole sheet in your kit if you choose to purchase one. So you can play with that a little bit if you've got a brayer. So now we are going to stamp our sentiment and then we will assemble. So I decided to make this one an Easter card. Obviously, if you have the stamp set, you can make it whatever you want. You can also um, use whatever stamps you have. That is one of the beauty of uh, grabbing some things and putting them together, right? you get to be the designer and the creator once they're in your hands. Okay, so thinking of you this Easter, I don't do a lot of Easter cards typically, um, 
but I think they're gorgeous. And I think I'm going to be buying the Lily set because it's just so pretty. And I do love an Easter, a good Easter li Lily. So there we go. All right. So let's put this card together. Super simple. I'm going to grab one more um, element here. We're going to make a, a double bow. So if this is enough twine, I have folded it in half so that I have two strands. I'm going to just make hopefully an easy bow. This works a whole lot better when you're not at the tail end of your string. There we go. And then I'm going to snip that little curve. So now I have a cute little double bow ready to put on here. So all of my pieces here. So this is going to be this cute little peekaboo piece. So I'm going to stick that down. And I have to say when the in colors came out, this is one of my favorites, this wild wheat color. And I have been using it or seeing a use for it with so many different color variations. And who would have thought mustard with pink, right? It looks like mustard or baby poo if you're in the, in the newborn uh, era of your life. So I just find it amusing that it goes with so much because I'm telling you, when I got it on my clothes when I was raising my kids, it didn't go with everything. So now you know a little bit of my dark humor. All right, so there is that perfect square cut right out of the DSP, already sized and ready to go. And now I'm gonna put my bow at the bottom here with a mini glue dot. I'm gonna simply put that on there, kind of scrape it off with my fingernails. It is pretty darn sticky once you get it on there. So here's the bow. Now the trick is you want to have your tag, your sentiment hangs over just a little bit. I lined mine up with these little curves at the top and bottom. So I know that my dimensionals just need to go on this side. So then I flip it over like that. So I know I'm staying on this side here. And if you have ever made an oops with this, there is this interesting product out there in, in the world called Undo. And this stuff is phenomenal for getting um, adhesive off. And it is just a lifesaver if you've put a lot of work into a layer on a card and it's really not doing what you want it to do. You can use that Undo stuff and just take it off. It doesn't hurt your card. I have, it doesn't hurt anything to, to date that I have ever tried. All right. So again, I'm going to use those same, um, iridescent foil gems because they went really well with this card. And let's see, I put one here and I, I'm, I'm kind of boring when it comes to the gems. I typically will do two or three on each card. Most of the time it's three. Again, I stuck with three. So that was card number two. All right, let's see what's next. I'm telling you, I had so much fun making this, this class that I hope you are enjoying seeing what is possible with this fun paper and this little punch and a couple of different uh, stamp sets. All right, so this one is a Mother's Day card and it's a little fun fold. And I copied this idea 
from Jennifer and Kat when we were on our Zoom, just playing on Zoom last week. So I was so excited because I was like, I want to do whatever that is. So here is a really fun fold. Um, a, yeah, a really fun fold card. So you're going to cut four and a quarter by 11. You want to score at four and three quarters and 10 inches. Okay. This is, what do we call it? The matchbook card. Now I have never done this as a card up until when I was designing this and learning about it last week from uh, Jennifer and Kat. And it's just so much fun. I've only done it with like little treats and a very small small version. So this is what your card base is going to look like. Scored it four and three quarters and 10 inches. Essentially, this is the matchbook look. Now I did use a staple or two staples and I stapled it from the back so that when you turn it into onto the back, of course I have no staples left live. Hello. All right. So when you turn it to the back, what you're going to see is just the, um, the smooth side of those staples. So as soon as I get a set of staples in here, we can keep that going. All right. So I did want to keep it nice and close to the end or to that folded edge. That's how it's going to stay shut. Okay. See that nice and close to the edge. So here is the front. Get my staples out of the way. And now I'm going to put some of this together. We have just one little stamp on the front, which is our Happy Mother's Day. Again, I used the pretty peacock that matches the card base. If you don't have a million colors, use one color, carry it through all of your cards. Um, the designer series paper should have some shared colors on here. So um, it is easy enough to look that up in our catalog or online. You'll see the whole list of colors. Pick one that you like that you think will show up on all the different um, colors. I think everything else is pretty much white, pink, and yellow. So any dark color that follows through all of these will work. Um, otherwise have fun, use color. All right. So this little piece is going to cover up that inside of the stamp here. And I'm just going to put some adhesive on here and cover that up. And I'm basically centering this in that rectangle. It does have that little lump, not a problem. Your kit will have a four by four square for the inside. I did choose to decorate with that lemon lolly. And I just did the bottom left corner gets a little covered up. So pull it up just a tiny bit. Super simple, not not always required, but um, I'm trying not to have naked insides this year. So let's go ahead. We are done stamping for this card. So we're going to add this layer on the inside here. Centering it on this square. And then I'll close this up. We are going to Again, this designer series paper is just so gorgeous. So we're letting it do all of the hard work. So we have a four by four square on a four and a quarter by four and a quarter. Nope. This is four by four. The inside is three and three quarters by three and three quarters. So each layer comes in because our card base is four and a quarter. So then we get four by four, three and a three and three quarters by three and three quarters, 
and I am putting this down nice and flat because we want our sentiment, we want this to tuck in and we're gonna center it at the top, giving it about equal distance from these three sides. And now this part is gonna tuck into this bottom part. If you're old enough to remember matchbooks, that's exactly what this basically looks like. And then we're going to add our sentiment on dimensionals at the bottom. Again, I want to make sure that those dimensionals are just at the bottom. So let's see, this will work. Double check where that is. And then I'm going to do a skinny one here. And I'm just going to grab a mini for right here. And we're gonna line this up so it's kind of centered and raise just a tiny bit from the bottom. Okay. And I chose our brushed metallic back dots for this one. And I'll just remind you, if you spend $50 um, using the host code, you will get one of these embellishments with your order. So you could carry it through all four cards, save it for other projects, however you want to use those. Those are extra free gifts from myself for being wonderful people and supporting my small business. I am going to add some of these brush dots and I did, let's see, I'm going to do three in a weird combination. So there you go, a little bit different. Pull that up a little bit. And then it opens like this. So that is just a little fun fold. And this fits in a standard envelope. So that's always a plus as well. Okay, so the last card is our piece de resistance, and it is so much fun. I did a couple of different styles of embellishing on this one. So I am going to use our Fern 3D embossing folder. This is one of those layers that I cut from that DSP. This is another layer um, from that DSP. And then I've got a white layer here. Got some inside pieces. This is one of the dies from our uh, Daisy set here. So you can see that is this piece right here. And I just left it whole because I think it's gorgeous. And it really looks nice against all of these. So. The first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and dry emboss with this Fern 3D. Because I am doing such a large piece, I do have to use the larger cut and emboss machine. And it doesn't matter if it goes in straight or not. Right. So I've got plate one and plate four for the 3D pieces here. I'm just going to send this through. Nope, I'm still alive. All right, so I don't know if you can see the texture on that, but it is just wonderful. Sometimes you want to zhuzh up your cards just a little bit, get a little extra with it, right? So we stepped this one up. All right, so we have four and a quarter by 11, scored at five and a half, folded. Our inside layer is naked. Oh my goodness, we're gonna have to add something to the inside, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and put those yellow daisies on the inside of this one. 
and put it on my fingers. Good thing I got that chamois all wet today before I started. All right, so here are those pretty daisies and I am again gonna put them at the bottom just to add some interest to the inside. You could, you could add more then you can write less if you're not a big writer. Wipe my hands one more time. Okay. So now we will add this to the inside. And then we can get started with our layers. So this is four by five and a quarter. And I'm going to go ahead and adhere this. We are going to center this one on here. Just like that. Now our next two pieces, we're going to put them offset a little bit. So this is four and a quarter by three and a quarter. And then I have a three by four piece here that I flipped over to the back side of our DSP that we had going on. So I'm gonna, oh, before I do that, I forgot, we have to get extra. We have to do our embossing. So we're gonna do a simple hello and we're gonna emboss with copper. So we need Versamark ink for this. Again, black is fine but we're going for extra for this card, okay? So let's add our hello, and I'm doing top left corner of my card, okay? I do have a tray for this because I don't have copper inside a little Tupperware bin like I have my clear and my white ones. So I do need my little tray to catch things. Okay, so I have sprinkled it on there while it's wet. So this is Versamark. It's a watermark stamp pad. It will stay kind of wet a little bit longer. It's a little stickier of an ink. So it allows me to add this embossing powder pretty easily there. And then this fun tray allows me to catch that mess. And if I had a lot, I can pour it back into my container. Um, this isn't too bad. I'll probably just brush that out at the end of the day before I put it away. Now, I failed to show you that you should use a um, an embossing buddy. So if you use the embossing buddy and this whole tray and embossing buddy and a little, this little guy come in a kit, but when you use the embossing buddy, it kind of puts down a little bit of a powder. So it'll keep your embossing powder from sticking to other places. I may have just messed it up a little bit. So let me, let me add a little bit more. So if your paintbrush doesn't work or is a little too thick, you can use the pointed side of um, your take a pick tool. Okay, so I got lucky. I don't have too much. I might have a couple of specks of copper on here. Not a big deal. So again, I am using this fabulous glass mat. I don't have to move anything. I don't have to go anywhere. I just have to make sure that I don't blow things off of my table. So I'm just going to set that on top of there. So I'm turning this on to the high heat part. It does have two settings. Um, you can kind of warm up both sides and it helps with the curling, but this glass mat can handle the heat of this embossing tool. And you'll see at some point it'll just start getting really shiny. Here it goes. So I really love that I don't have to like move to another side of the room to do this. And just like that, I was able to emboss on this card almost forgetting that I was going to emboss on this card. So super fun little element. 
And I just want to show you how gorgeous that is on this uh, color. So this is the copper embossing powder on the Moody Mauve background color. So, so much fun. But now we can get back to layering. So we're going to put this piece centered on here. And then this whole piece is going to be kind of on the bottom right of the card. So we're going to kind of shift everything and not be so centered and equal, equidistant from all edges. Okay. So we have that. I am going to go ahead and add these uh, beautiful flowers on here. They're going to hang over this edge. So I am putting these up on dimensionals. And since I had my minis out, I'm going to go ahead and use those. And I just like to find the spots on the flowers where the petals are kind of merged because it's a makes a larger spot for me to set my dimensionals and give it a pop even though it's kind of a dainty a dainty piece. So you do want to be careful when you're cutting them cuz your your leaf can easily pop off. And do one more at the bottom here. Okay. And I am just pulling those backings off. I really need to color like every every one of these when I get them off because then I don't have to do all this weird. Are they all shiny? Crazy, crazy that that tip is my favorite one, right? Color the back of your dimensionals. Then you know when you have all the backings off. Okay, so here is that raised up fun piece. And again, we will add some dimensionals here. I will have to get those. I go through these so fast. I should just color them by the pack. All right. So again, this one's going to kind of sit at the bottom right. And I did kind of just do a little equidistant on the bottom and right hand side to some degree, but it's it's not perfect, but it's beautiful. It works well. And because I really loved the copper, I went with this coppery pink gold looking brushed metallic dots on here. So I will do that right here. I am definitely messing these up today. All right. So we have one. And I think I'm going to put a third one just right here. Tone on tone. I mean, it's just gorgeous. So this is card number four. So let me put these out here. I never have enough room at the end for all four cards, but you'll get to see a little tiny bit of each one. I'd love to know which one is your favorite. They were all pretty easy tonight. Even, even our zhuzhed up one, two passes through the embossing machine shares, uh, shows you can add a little bit of interest to your cards without too much work. Three of them with our fabulous hexagon punch. And now I want to share with you a tiny little bit of the stamp set that I am using for the February club class. These are not the cards we're making in club. Um, these are all kind of Valentine-y. We are using this set with zero Valentine intent, which is, um, which is why I'm doing it on February 18th. So it's after Valentine's day, but you can see how you could use this stamp set beforehand. 
Well, hello, Miss Kathy. <laughs> you liked them all. Yeah, me too. So here is some of the B suite that uh, we'll be using. That fun, fun B. Again, we're not doing Valentine's with ours. This is one of my favorite ones. I did not make this one. This is from Kathy Arlinghouse, one of the Craftastics. Uh, she created this very fun fold with our deckled circles and those fabulous bees and some wink of Stella on their wings, which do not show up in the camera very well. So anyway, wink of Stella is fabulous. I have a couple more swap cards. So this was done by <laughs> Trisha Hugulet. Again, if I am killing some names, I apologize. So that is one. And then this one is by Dawn Bourget. Bourget. Um, Dawn has a fabulous um, eye for creating. I love watching some of her videos too. So this is her card. So those are some of the bees in the event that you have one. I hope you did a screenshot. Watch the replay. Rewind it a little bit. And you can get some screenshots and have some fun ideas for your Be My Valentine combo, bundle, suite, whatever, how many pieces you bought. Um, that's it for me tonight. I hope that you have a fantastic rest of uh, this week. Um, we're getting rain on Saturday. I hope you get to stay dry and comfortable. Um, and that's about it. I look forward to seeing you all again. Thank you for spending time with me. And um, I would say go forth and be merry, but really I just want you to stay crafty and make beautiful things. So I'll see y'all next week.